Day three, you're with Potter. Right. <laughs> There's only one sign I have that we need, and that's that one. <laughs> Day three, with Potter. As you can see, there's not a man near him. <laughs> he's he's on his own. He's been left alone. He's nervous. We've told him he's all this preparation to do. And we're going to start him off with a feeder that he didn't know anything about. A self-propelled. Because nobody has a self-propelled at home. Didn't want to start him off easy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. She's nice and warm in here. Oh. So obviously this is one of the halls. This is kind of, we're her. doing this the wrong way around. This is kind of the last hall of machine yes. kind of gets ready and heads outside to, to, to head on. But so there's axles, this is where the axles go this in is here. This hall is mainly for these self-loading machines and your self-propelled, which is over there. Is there a market, do you think? Hattering in Ireland for self-propelled feeding. Now, I, obviously, I couldn't believe how big a market this was for you and when you study up this production line from there yeah. right the whole way mm -hmm. down, round the corner and back out again it is constantly, you are constantly putting out trio tracks Yeah, the main, market, some... the main market for trio tracks would probably be Germany to answer your question about Ireland I'm going to answer it two ways, yes and no Self-propelled machine, I don't care what make it is, it's a totally different machine for, than a tractor and, and trailed mixer. Yes. You have to take into consideration that there may, there may be a lot of other drivers driving the machine, so you have a problem with that there. You would know that with trucks, different men and trucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secondly, if the yard doesn't suit, if you have a rough yard, like a lot of the yards in Ireland and the UK, are doing a lot of road work, especially in some of the roads in Ireland, I would not recommend a self-propelled. Right, okay. Okay. But there is a market for it in certain places. But self-propelled is leading you into another but equally, dimension. Another but equally, you, really. you look, you look yeah. at your mowers, you look at your foragers. When guys go self-propelled, they tend to never go back. They tend to prefer that True. way. Now, I'm not saying that guys couldn't look at it or shouldn't look at it, and I get exactly what you're saying, but you know what I mean? Like, there's ov obviously... We're well, either late. A machine designed for one purpose is always better. We're either late it, innovators. You know. Well, that, that farm we were on this morning, that thing and that feeder, feeder is averaging 1,200 hours, hours a year. And that's all it does. And that's all it does. That tractor yeah. does nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, to be blunt, the one, one real disadvantage of a self-propelled machine is against the trail machine. If the self-propelled breaks down, how do you feed uh, your cows? Yeah, well, at yeah. least with a trail machine, you can hook another tractor into it. Exactly. You know? So this is the cab. This is the cab. Previous the to... <laughs> Have you ever drove one? Yes. They let you drive one. Yes. <laughs> but it was only out in that yard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be really cool. It's... I, I, it's, a, it's I watched the guy loading it yesterday, and smooth as salt would be the only way to describe it. Well, one big advantage of the cab that is was that boy's first rodeo, loading one there. Twenty years, I think he's been here. Uh, one big this advantage. Is the new, this, this is the this new. Is new this is the new small um, yeah. trio track M. So it's no longer been built at. No, it's no longer been built at. And the reason for that, there, you're using less horsepower. This is a more efficient. I'm not saying it's more efficient, but it works. Well, right, they, okay. They, they, okay. well the, the books what, claim that it's more efficient. Yeah. But you, you, you know, it takes a lot of drive and a big belt, and then, as you said yourself earlier on, uh, the load in that belt. Ah, that's right, it's some drive. You're, you're, mo it? you're moving yeah. a lot of stuff, whereas this here is bringing you, stuff in. You can see like, straight away, boys, when you look in there, you can see that's a much taller. Correct, that's a taller auger because that <laughs> there is a. <laughs> you know, you can physically yeah, yeah, see yeah. that looking up in there. That's a 14 cubic meter single auger machine. Oh. What was the one you sent out to us? That was a 16? 16 cube twin auger. That was a twin auger? Yeah, 2.32 uh, meters wide, 2.91 meters high because it had a higher wheel. So it had a narrow auger and a, and a lower auger. This one's for Germany. This one's for Germany. Through the dealer. Through dealer class. It's cleaner class, we can see that. Engine at the rear, discharge at the rear. 
one. Um, now, would that not be quite a small feeder for a self-propelled machine? Like this is kind of what I'm trying to get back to here is self-propelled feeder in my head. Big machine. Big, 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 not big, big. Not that's not a. No. That's not. That's an. Is that not a run-of-the-mill feeder size-wise? It Single is. Over 14. It is. But for the market where that's going to, smallish farmers, 20, 30 cows. Yeah. Maybe part-time farmers like some of the farmers we have at home, and I a guy they want their toys. I and a guy maybe doing two or three different maxes in the day. Exactly. So you know. Does your does your cab then, when you're in a self-propelled machine, does your cab stay with the where she's slicing down through the silage? No, you can move that cab up and down. And still have your boom up and down. Yeah. All independently. Yeah. Not only really that, she, she goes down at the bottom on these rams so that you go right to the floor of your silo yeah. and she comes down, cuts the material. This There's a feed roller in there that rolls the material onto either the belt, depending on the model, or... I don't see it wheel. there yet. It's not, it's not there. You're, you're at the wrong end of production for that. This is not a complete machine. <laughs> oh, boy. Is there any chance we could see one of these bad boys working when we're here? You will be going to one tomorrow to well, see a tree attract tomorrow. I'd love to see one of them. Yeah, you'll see a tree that, attract a real, I find that really interesting. Welcome back, Patrick. Nice, nice to see you again. Uh, 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 on a sunny morning. What is this? This is our tree attract self-propelled feeder, 20 cubic meter, which we are marketing uh, worldwide now. We do a range of self-propelled feeders from 17 cubic meters to 32 cubic meters. We have also introduced a new range of what they call the Trio Track M, which is a single logger machine, but is a um, slightly different configuration. Again, back to what we said earlier on, the front of the machine where we, where we take the material away from the pit, we still put big emphasis on pit management. So it's, yeah. a, t it's a telescopic boom that can take down from a pit 6.5 metres. You're talking about pit management? Yes. Just while he's putting a bit of other stuff into it there. Well, this is our pit now. I'll come out into the sunshine. So she's effectively going up to the top and bringing it down in layers. Yes, but it's deep layers rather deep layers in, 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 the, in the vertical mode rather than deep layers in the horizontal mode. As you can see here, we're only getting in about 300 mil or yeah. about a foot and taking a big curve down, leaving the pit in a nice shape to reduce losses from oxidation and bad weather and even from heat as well. I mean obviously you can't say that it replaces a, a, a Lodo or a Telehandler or in this case a Merlot because we still need, we still, farms still need that type of material handling machine but it's going to cut down in the use of one. You know it's going to cut well back in the hours that one of those machines are needed to do because and it certainly cuts down on operator fatigue. Now, I know maybe a lot of people don't consider that when it comes to feeding cows, but it's really a one machine does all. One machine does all. Um, one major concept of it is, is if you were if you were employing, I suppose it's the same on, on, on the automatic feeding as well. If you're employing somebody to do all your feeding and you have a telehandler, now I do accept that the telehandler is available for other jobs. But when you take the cost of the, the salary, the cost of diesel, the yeah. cost of all in the telehandler, when yeah. you, even though the machines on, on paper looks a lot more expensive than a trail mixer, when you factor in all the, the other costs, including the tractor, and if everything is perfect for the machine and everything is ideal for the machine, it's a no-brainer. But it's back to yards have to suit and it has to work well. The yards have to suit, the silos have to suit, the infrastructure and the roads has to suit or it's not going to work. I think what's surprising me nearly the most here is the, is the, the tightness of that pit. Yeah. That's, and, uh, I've repeated it before, that's one of our major uh, concepts in, in our feeding program is, is, is pit management. Because at the end of the day, the cows make you money and they have to be looked after, right? seen in the factory, it's running JCB engine, JCB axles, JCB or JCB drive train, yeah. Yeah. and then everything else is sort of designed by yourselves. That's right, yeah. That is correct. But at, but at the principal core of it is a trail leak. 20 cube, 20 over. It's a 20 cube, 20, uh, 20 cube, 20 over machine built to the same principles as a trail mixer.
mixture or a static mixture. The reason we're using JCB and, and ATL transmission is that they marry up very well because they're all part of the same company. Well look, Patrick, it's been an insightful two or three days with Trail Leet. Now obviously this is at the different end of what we normally do. Mm -hmm. we, have, we, I suppose, have built our brand on, on the other side of grass and I know we, we've diversified a lot but to see a company like Trail Leet, you know that's when you, you know when you look it's competing in the world market from humble beginnings three brothers Leet yeah. brothers in Holland that's right yeah. that are you know now now, one of the top world players in feeding technologies, you now, know, now in business, not, seventy-two years. Yeah. But from a, from another perspective too, it, it's nice to to sort of continue your story that you've you've made the silage. Yeah. Now you know how the silage is is, is, is utilised in mixer wagons to feed the cows, and then you have done the slurry system as well. So you've done, really done the system from field to fork. That's it, and I suppose Ireland, Northern Ireland, and UK were sometimes sometimes we're very early adopters of technologies and sometimes we're a little bit later to the table but you know since we've came here and looked at seeing the robotic system and then across the road you've had a system in 17 years an, a, an automatic system that was our first and system you, was installed there and that is still going you have um self-propelled feeders which we we don't really consider as an option and, I, and i'm not saying we shouldn't i'm just saying we don't really consider as an option yet at home but maybe we do need to be looking at more things like that well with the the problem of labor yeah. cost of labor availability of labor self-propelled is a good option and it does it can do away with, a, with uh, a tractor what would that be like sawing down through long silage that will cut sideways the same way as it'll, cut, as a, as it'll handle the maize. It'll, because there are, there are reciprocating blades on the machine, it will it will go cut, cut down through the sideways. But it's so smooth at feeding out. One of the big big uh, um, uh, big advantages of a three elite feeder, no matter what way we do we do the where we put the discharge doors or the belt rear or side, <coughs> we get even discharge. Obviously, longer chunk material. Like in any feeder is a wee bit harder to get out. But, but just follow it here with me. Because another little thing about our feeder, if you notice on the side, there are curves in the side and, and it's narrowed in the middle. That's to emphasize and increase and improve discharge. So we've seen the trio track. Mm -hmm. We've seen the uh, Triomatic. Triomatic, which is the robot. We've seen, seen the Solomix. You've seen the Solomix 3. One, two, three. <laughs> You've seen two. It's, it's Solomix 1, Solomix 2, Solomix 3. Obviously, the 1, 2, and 3 is the amount of augers. And you have seen, you haven't seen one in the flesh or in the, on site, but you've seen the static mixer, you've seen a biogas mixer. So basically, you've seen nearly everything we've covered, including the yeah. block cutters and the, the Trio Master S. He's a happy man in there. <laughs> what a lovely farm.